So uh, for my talk <laughs> at the table, um, we're talking with a Hollywood powerhouse, and I truly do mean that, Judd Apatow. He is one of the producers behind the new movie Bros, which stars Billy Eichner. It's the first ever gay rom-com movie made by a major Hollywood studio. Apatow is also the creative force behind films like Bridesmaids, classic, Knocked Up, classic, and the 40-year-old version, classic, 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 that's what he does. In this clip, Eichner's character Bobby is texting Aaron, a guy that he likes. Honestly, I was impressed. You may be more emotionally unavailable than I am. Well, maybe we can be emotionally unavailable together. Maybe we can be emotionally unavailable together. Who's writing your texts, Maroon 5? Kidding. We can go out. Are you asking me out? I'm down for whatever. Yeah, same. Cool. Sounds good. So, tomorrow? Or we can do whenever. Yeah, I can do whenever and I can do whatever. I don't care what we do. Yeah, me neither. We can do whatever and we can do it whenever. Does that work for you? Yeah, that definitely works. Great. Whatever, whenever. Cool. Whatever, whenever. GIF of Michael Scott dancing. That's good. Office GIF? This person isn't gay. <laughs> Judd Apatow joins us right now. What's up, bro? Good morning. I'm just trying to be in the pocket. I just yeah. I've like, <laughs> waited my whole life for like what the simplest dance advice That's would it. be. Is that the it's shoulder it, shake? You got the shoulder. Keeping it tight. Keeping it yeah. tight. Let's, keeping let's it tight. Please move it along. I cannot <laughs> linger on dancing anymore. Please. So let's talk about this movie. It's the first gay rom-com film made by a major Hollywood studio. Um, what does it mean to be part of something historic like this? Uh, you know, when something like this starts, it, you know, it's just, I want to work with Billy Eichner. Mm -hmm. You know, Nick Stoller wrote it with Billy Eichner, and he directed it. He directed Forgetting Sarah Marshall. Because and they came know. to me, and I just thought, well, it would be amazing to work with, with Billy because he's so hilarious. And later, when it's kind of done, people say, oh, it's kind of a big deal. They don't make movies like this. Yeah. And so uh, I'm very happy that we're getting it out there. You know, it, it says something that a studio wanted to get behind it, right? It doesn't say they wanted to make history. It says yeah. they wanted to make money, and they think yeah. they can. So something has changed culturally. I mean, do yeah. you think... The public is ready for this. This is the time for this movie. It didn't happen 30 years ago for a reason, right? Well, you know, we, you know, you test these movies. You bring them around the country to see if people get the jokes and they like right. the movie. And people just went crazy for it. I mean, it's really hilarious, very like sweet and romantic. But the the vibe I got from the crowd was we were ready for this a really long time. Right. Mm -hmm. This yeah. took way too long to happen. And there should be way no. more movies like that. Yeah, no, and it's not just like rewriting the script from what, you know, heterosexual rom-com would be. It's like, it's very intentional and methodical. If anyone has friends who date yeah. in the scene, the head of the LGBTQ community, you know, it ain't like what yeah. us folk do. Well, I think that, uh, you know, the key for Billy was just to make it really authentic right. to his experience. But I think that all dating is just a disaster. <laughs> you know, I mean, I think it's just always like, you know, it's funny and awkward and it's, you know, it's hard to find love. It's hard to find connection. Yeah. So people all, you know, relate to these stories. Yeah, the movie shows differences, but also the parallels, exactly, right? Exactly, exactly. all dating relationships. Um, this, this film has almost um, every character in it, every actor, yeah. um, part of the LGBT club, LGBTQ plus community. Um, why was it important to have that type of representation in this film? Uh, I think that, you know, early in the process, Billy just thought, let's, let's have every single person acting in the movie be from the LGBTQ plus community. And I, part of it is because there's so many talented people that don't get opportunities. Mm -hmm. And so we talk a lot, you know, about how many people we love that are so riotously funny. Yeah. And, and you see them and you wish there was more to, you know, go online and see all their stuff, but they have been denied opportunities. And, yeah. And they're amazing. Yeah. Uh, you've got a lot of great movies out there. Uh, if I wanted to watch everything you've ever done, yeah. uh, I did some calculations this morning, yeah. I'd have to subscribe to at least seven, maybe eight different streaming services. Yeah. It's you know, complicated. It's, you know, this is what they need to figure out because it's like 15 bucks a service and you need like six, seven, eight. And uh, I often wish that they were all connected in some way, like a channel. Like oh, cable, or maybe like connected okay. with a cable. With the cable. And maybe you pay one person. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you can tell it's going to all reform. Like I was like trying to figure out where my stuff was because you know it's I'm here. I could plug. Like if you wanted to see the bubble. Yeah. Netflix. Okay. If you Never wanted to see uh, exactly. Anchorman 2, Amazon, Anchorman 1, Paramount Plus. Yeah! yeah. Hey, man. Oh, that's a good one. Anchorman. I love it. Really good. Forgetting Sarah Marshall, for, Forgetting Sarah Marshall is on Tubi. 
uh, and then funny people, Peacock. They're everywhere. They're anyway. everywhere. It's well, too much for people. We have to say congratulations on both your Emmy for George Carlin's American Dream. Oh, it's great. Uh, which, which you is a, that. yeah, which is a documentary. But I, I have to say, so much. Would you say? Were you influenced by him and mm -hmm. and what you do and what you, and how you do it? Well, I think if you know if you loved comedy as a little kid and you watched a lot of George Carlin, I think it like he programmed your brain to be a critical thinker because mm -hmm. that's really what he was all about was taking a really hard look at things and and challenging authority. He used to say. Parents don't teach uh, their kids to challenge authority because their authority. So you don't want your kids to challenge you, but you really want uh, people, especially now, to look at oh, what's yeah. going on and get educated. You know, he always says, like, we get the politicians we deserve. You know, you have to really yeah, pay yeah. attention. Yeah, yeah. That, that's not a very flattering bit for the American yeah. electorate. <laughs> no, it's not. And it was a very intimate look at Carlin, especially later in his life. A fantastic. Yeah. It work. really was well, well done. done. Thank you. I have to say thank you too for bringing this important work, Bros, in a funny. It's movie. very funny. It is no, hilarious. It's a very funny movie. So thank you. Go see it. Yeah. yeah, that's the most important thing. I mean, I think we all need a comedy in a theater. Just watching a comedy we need it. with like a lot of people is so fun. We all, we all need that big laugh. Nothing like a good comedy. Judd Apatow, thank you so much. We appreciate you. Bros hits theaters on Friday, September 30th.